Hi, I'm Christian, and you may not know this about me, but I love a good treasure hunt. Sometimes you'll get riddles or clues that you need to solve to get to the treasure. And then sometimes you'll get a sound that you need to identify in order to find what you're looking for. So in today's God story, we're gonna see that if we listen to God, we'll also find something very special. Let's see what it is. And today, we're going to jump ahead into the future, 700 years to be exact, from when, what's his name, Isaiah? Hi friends, my name is Zulima. One summer, when I was working at camp, my friends and I had the night off, and so we decided to go into town and maybe try and catch a movie. So we actually had no idea what was playing at the theater, and we just decided to choose one. And it was the best movie I have ever seen in my entire life. It made the night with my friends one that I will never, ever forget. When we spend time with God, we get to know Him more. And when we listen to God, we discover his love. We also come to know that God's love is greater than anything we could ever imagine. So previously, we talked about a prophet named Isaiah. And remember what a prophet does? They share God's words to the people. And the prophecy that Isaiah shared was about the birth of Jesus, who would be born from Mary, who was a virgin. And what's amazing about this prophecy is that it happened 700 years before Mary or even Jesus existed on earth. So then Mary has this amazing encounter with an angel and the angel tells her that she is going to have God's son and his name would be Jesus. Now normally if that was me I would freak out but Mary calmly says okay I'm in. So Mary is ready to follow through with God's purpose. And then she goes to visit her cousin Elizabeth. And Elizabeth is also pregnant. And the amazing thing about that is that Elizabeth became pregnant in her old age. Elizabeth gave birth to her child, and it was a boy. And Elizabeth and her husband Zachariah, they named him John. Everyone knew that John was going to be a special baby. But the question is, how did they know that? Well, they knew because Zachariah, John's father, had received a prophecy from God. He thanked God for keeping his promises about John. And he said, well, let's just read what he said. And you, my little son, will be called the prophet of the Most High, because you will prepare the way for the Lord. You will tell his people how to find salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. Because of God's tender mercy, the morning light from heaven is about to break upon us, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide us to the path of peace. What an amazing thing that God spoke to Zachariah about John. Zachariah said that John would tell his people how to find salvation through the forgiveness of sins. And when John grew up, that's exactly what he did. He pointed people to Jesus in just this way. So after John was born, who would later be known as John the Baptist, there was this rule made by Caesar Augustus, who was the ruler at that time. And he commanded that everybody return to their hometown or the town that they were born in. So the question is, why did Caesar Augustus demand that everybody go back to their hometown? Well, he did it because he wanted to do a census. And a census is a way to track how many people are living in each country. So Joseph, you know, the guy that was engaged to Mary, he was from a town called Bethlehem that was also called the town of David. And that's where he needed to go. So Mary and Joseph traveled over a hundred kilometers. Let's read what happened next. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. So Mary gave birth to Jesus and had to lay him in a manger. And that's a trough, which is literally the place where the animals eat their food. At the same time, just outside of town, God had sent a message to some shepherds. But the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, 
the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, glory to God in highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Think about that for a minute. It's a host of angels singing praises to God. Can you imagine what that would have been like to see, to experience, to hear? When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard. It was just as the angel had told them. Imagine how cool it would have been to be Mary, sitting there holding the baby Jesus. Or think about the shepherds who get this visit from an angel and then they go and see the baby Jesus. God loved us so much that he sent Jesus. And like the shepherds who heard from an angel of God, when we listen to God, we too can discover his love. And that is something that he desperately wants us to know. Friends, thanks so much for spending time with me today. I'll see you later. So the shepherds followed the message that they got from the angels and they acted on it and they found Jesus, the Messiah, the rescuer, God's pure love. So let's watch Anna's story to see how she experienced God's love when she desperately needed to hear from him. Watch this. I grew up in an awesome family with two parents and two older sisters, much older as I would joke, who loved me very much unconditionally. Also growing up as a pastor's kid, I got to learn about God and his love for me. But the older that I got, I realized that I didn't really understand what that meant on a personal level. And as I got older, I became more broken in the lack of a relationship with God until I reached a point where I needed to hear God say he loved me. I'm Anna. I absolutely love music. I love vacations and the sun. I am not a winter person. If it could be summer 24 hours, 365 days a year, that would make me a very happy person. My dad was a pastor and uh, a musician. Uh, we would love to sit and sing with him. And he had a really cool knack of making each of us feel like we were special and unique. He was everything to us. It sounds silly to say, to put that much into one person, but he was the one that we went to with our problems and to lose him felt like we were losing a big part of our lives. I felt the loss of a very special relationship. I felt the lack of love in that sense. I think even as a kid, I was always drawn to music. Um, I knew that I could sing and uh, was very quickly affirmed by others that this was a gift and felt like this was my way to get closer to God. I saw opportunities come up in church. Uh, we were a, quite a big church, and so there was opportunities within youth or young adults or even Sunday mornings to, to lead. And as much as I saw what I wanted, it never seemed within my grasp. Every time that I made steps forward to follow a dream or to say, this is what I want to do, I always felt like doors kept shutting in my face. I just, I guess I felt like I tried to attain something and I felt like I was doing all the right things to get there. I was a good person. I was a good Christian. I read my Bible. I was extremely involved in all areas. And yet it didn't matter what box I checked off. It wasn't enough. It felt like it was never enough. And yeah, I got to a place of saying, I can't do this anymore. I am tired of feeling like on the inside, I feel rejected and never good enough. I feel like I'm a hot mess, and yet I'm constantly trying to portray someone to everybody else that's perfect, that has it together, that is good enough. And I got to a place almost like a breaking point where I couldn't take it anymore. 
And I remember just having a real honest moment with God and saying, I know you're there, but I don't know you. And I almost gave God an ultimatum that night, that feeling of, God, I will give you everything and I will open my heart up and my life up to who you are. And I will be obedient to listen to you. But in return, I need to know that you love me. a night of watching God come in and wash away all of the garbage that I had kept inside for so long. All of that pain, all of even the grieving of, of not really being able to let go that I didn't have a physical dad anymore, the, the feelings of rejection. I watched God wash that away and in its place give me such a peace um, that I'll never be able to put words to. As I was laying there with my eyes closed, I saw a picture of two eyes with fire in them. And I remember being startled, thinking, what is this? And hearing so clearly for the first time God say to me, this is my love that burns for you. And in that moment, it was the first time I understood what it meant to be his kid, that it wasn't about a checklist of things I needed to do for him that at the end of the day, my identity wasn't found in being a perfect pastor's daughter or being the best worship leader or even in my singing abilities. At the core of who I was, my identity was found in being his kid. And that's all I needed in that moment. And for the first time, I understood his love. That was the night I, I finally sat in front of my keyboard and wrote my first song uh, called The Father's Love. Anna is so talented. She has the most amazing voice, and I know her personally, and let me tell you, she is the nicest person ever. Anna was at a place where many people find themselves. She did everything that she thought God wanted her to do, but she didn't have that personal relationship with God. When things got really tough, Anna cried out to God, and that's when she experienced his love, and that changed her life. Let's break up into our small groups and see how this looks in our own lives. Peace.